how do we know that acupuncture meridians are real? That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode of Chi Life. So I've been seeing and hearing this question pop up a few different places lately, including in a Qigong class that I was teaching last week. So I thought maybe it's a good topic for a little vlog. Um, okay, I'm going to get straight to the point. I'll just check and make sure there's no one around because this is one of the deep secrets of Qigong. How do we know that meridians are real? Because we can feel them. Mind blowing! A lot of people don't realize this. Um, now I'm going to do a little bit of demonstration and explanation of how you can feel the meridians a little bit later on in the vlog. I'm just going to talk about a few other details first. So for a lot of people they think of the meridians like just these mystical made up lines that someone has drawn. Uh, you know, like someone just made them up. In fact, I recently heard this from an acupuncturist of all people saying, oh, they're just made up. Like, really? <laughs> they are definitely not made up. Um, I think it's a real shame that people don't have a better understanding of the readings. Again, even people sometimes who have trained in arts or practices, medicine that relates to this, they still don't actually understand the meridians. Um, the, there's, there's different people who have tried to study the meridians and it cracks me up because often again when they look researching the meridians it, it's clear from their research they're looking for the wrong thing. They're never going to find it because they're looking for the wrong thing. Um, there has been some good research as well though um, and, and so some of the common ways that people uh, you, you know, that can demonstrate things relating to the meridian. One is the acupuncture points, because these are the meridians they used in acupuncture, they used in Qigong practice, because they're pathways that energy flows within. And so, you know, in Qigong we're interested in balancing and making our energy flow healthy. Acupuncture, same thing, manipulating it in a different way with, with needles rather than with movement and breath and intention and so on. Um, and so one of the ways that this is, can be demonstrated is the acupuncture points have a different electrical resistance than um, other parts of the body and so you can move along and you can find oh there's a spot with a different resistance and then there's another spot. So those are the points along the meridians, not the meridians themselves but still some evidence that there's something going on there. Um, some other research that's been done, not on a large sample size or anything like that, but some people have done some interesting research uh, looking at the far infrared radiation patterns in the body. And apparently some of them have found evidence of flows uh, in, in pathways you know, that correlate with the, the meridians of far infrared radiation. And so that makes a lot of sense that um, because it's not just electrical flow, it's, it's all the types of energy that flows through these pathways and the human heat signature is really in the infrared and in the far infrared range and so it makes sense that the, you, know, you would be able to potentially measure this in the pathways. So those are some scientific sort of things but the, the question often comes, you know, how did people first discover the meridians? How did, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you know that? And, and you can feel these, feel them for yourself. You can find them for yourself. And then when you've done that, you're able to work with them much more effectively. So I'm going to show you one example of an exercise and how you can feel the meridian within that exercise or how you can feel a meridian within that exercise and then talk a little bit about the link uh, between the mind and the body and how understanding the meridians helps us to understand this and work with it. So the exercise I'm going to show you is called Wild Goose Beats Its Wings. You can find it in the 12 rivers set of exercises so that's uh, the organ meridians flow like rivers so 12, one for each of the main organ meridians and uh, on the Long White Cloud Qigong website it's in the Qigong Foundation Practices course if you're interested in looking at more of that. But this exercise is for the heart. So I'll just show you the exercise first and then we'll talk through how you can feel the meridian as part of this exercise. So we breathe in 
and then we breathe out, 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 out. There are actually several different breathing patterns you can use, but that's the most common one. So you pull your elbows back, push your elbows up, back, forwards, and then you open your hands with your palms facing down. One more time, breathe in, breathe out, 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 out. Okay, so when you do these exercises well, any of the exercises in the 12 Rivers course, you will feel at least three things. You will feel a literal stretching, pulling, compressing stimulation in the meridian that you're working on. You will feel some physical massaging in the organ that relates to the meridian and some loosening in the spine in the area where the nerves go to the meridian. So quite a lot of different things all happening at once. And then as a result of it, if you feel those three things, if you do them successfully, there's a good chance you are going to stimulate the energy in that organ, in that meridian. And so you may start to feel feelings of energy flow, which is awesome. Sometimes that takes a little bit of practice. To begin with, what you're more likely to feel is the physical stretching and compression, and that's a good start. That helps you to understand the connection between the meridian, the other aspects of your body, and your mind as well. That's enough to begin with. So, to begin with, let's, let's look at the organ first, actually. What does this movement have to do with the organ? Well, our heart is in the middle of our chest, almost the middle, slightly off to the left, almost in the middle of, the, of, of our chest. So as we do this movement, as we pull back, it stretches and opens this space this way, wide, as we pull our elbows back. As we push our elbows up, it stretches through this way. So we're stretching, opening, stretching, opening. Then as we bring our elbows forwards, it presses in on the front and stretches and opens at the back. So stretching, opening, stretching, opening, folding back in. And all of this area, all of this movement, opening and closing, opening and closing, starts to massage around your heart. If you do the movement faster, because when you're doing it slow, it feels more like a gentle stretch. When you do it faster, it feels more like a massage. Much like if you do this, it feels just stroking. If you do it faster, you can feel some of the warmth and activity build up a little bit more. You can try that with this exercise. It's difficult to do the full movement too fast to begin with, unless you've practiced it a bit. So you can do a simpler movement. If you just pull your elbows back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards, back, forwards. And you can do this, you know, a bit faster, a bit more rhythmically, and you'll start to feel the massaging effect massaging around your heart. So you're literally giving the area around your heart a little bit of a massage. Let's now look at the meridian. So if you don't know where your heart meridian is, which if you're really interested in Qigong you may already know that, that's awesome, or if you're uh, interested in acupuncture and so on you might already know that. If you don't, it starts deep in your armpit, right in your armpit, runs down the lower inside portion of your arm and it comes to the inside of your little finger and it does this on both sides. All of the Qigong meridians run on both sides of the body. So the same movement that massages and moves all around our heart is going to also stimulate this meridian. Let's see with the movement how that works. If you pull your fists back, pull your elbows back, Hopefully you can feel there's like a little pull, a little stretch in the start of the meridian here in your armpit. If you can't feel that, pull them back a bit further until you can feel a gentle pull there, a gentle stretch. Then as we lift up, keep your elbows quite close to your head, stretch up. Hopefully you can feel a little bit of a stretch from your elbow, from your armpit up to your elbow. Right, from here we come back, come forwards. This one you've got to get the angles kind of just right, it's a little bit subtle. We open out, palms down, and we have, it's like a curved, like a curved shape. And we send our hands out at the height of our heart, and it's like we're just pressing out gently with this curved shape. And we feel a stretch, and it comes 
right through to the inside of our little finger. So, armpit, armpit to elbow, elbow to little finger. Interesting, the movements that massage and move all around the heart also stimulate the meridian. Maybe that's because there's a connection, maybe. And look, even Western medicine understands a connection for this particular example between the meridian and the organ. Not so much for the others, but for this one they recognize the connection because if someone has angina, has heart pain, where do they feel it? Boom, through the heart meridian, down the inside of the arm, normally on the left, they can sometimes get it on the right, but normally on the left, and down here into the little finger. That's the heart meridian that they feel. And that's because there's a connection between what happens inside our body and the external parts of our body. If you have a pain inside your body, anywhere inside your body, you generally, uh, your, the, your external body responds. It moves around and closes around to protect it and so on, things like that. And so it's all connected, literally. For the case of our heart, two main uh, options of what our body is going to do if we have a pain in our heart. We could have a pain that makes us go Ugh! to close in around it, to protect it. Yeah? Or we could have a different kind of pain that makes us go Ugh! to take the pressure off. Yeah? Two options, close around or take the pressure off. Very clearly, if I have one of these here or here, this is not just affecting my heart. It's affecting all the way through the rest of my body. Largely the arms, but the rest of my body to some extent as well. Same thing if I go here. It's affecting into the rest of, the, of my body. And in particular, it affects through the heart meridian. There's a connection between this part of our body or this pathway in our body and the heart inside. So, now this is the extreme. Big, oh, closing or opening. The same thing can happen even on a small scale. We might have a, just a little weakness or a tiny bit of pain or that we're not even consciously aware of, but there's something going on in our heart. We might not go all the way like this, but our body will still make little subtle adjustments that we're not even aware of that's going to affect the heart itself as well as affect other parts of our body. So using the big movement it's easier to see so i'll continue dem demonstrating with that if i have something that's making me close in like this around my heart what will the exercise do i'm closed in well i'm going to start to open this way and then i'm going to open back up this way so i'm going to start to release the tension that may have built up as a result of that and then obviously I'm going to finish it off. Finishing it off is important as well. Because what if I had a pain or something going on in my heart that was making me uh, go this way? Well, this doesn't make a lot of difference yet. This doesn't make a lot of difference yet. But when I do this, I close that back in. So doing the exercise, we're exploring the range. We're moving right through it. So if we've become stiff or locked up, the energy has become blocked in any way, we find the balance in the middle, we release the tension, we find the balance. As I mentioned briefly, this also connects to our mind, our mind and our body combined. Of course, our mind affects our postures, makes us respond in different ways to different things happening around us, and this then affects our, well, our physical body, but also our organs as well. In Chinese medicine, the primary emotion of the heart, of the fire element, is joy. So what is the posture of joy? Well, it's opening through the chest. In the extreme, if you think of joy in terms of celebration, yeah, we open, we open for joy. On the other hand, what's the flip side of that? It's to be heartbroken, disheartened, discouraged. What's the posture of that? It's quite specific. The chest sinks and so these postures are not too different from the postures of if we had pain in our heart now these are emotional stimulation that pain is a type of energy 
a type of excess energy or deficiency of energy sometimes in, in, in the area. These emotions are another kind of energy. Too much energy can make us come like this. Too little or weakened energy can make us cave in, much the same thing. And in fact, these emotions, this energy moving through into our heart, it affects the health of our organ. One of the main times that people have heart attacks, if they have a weak heart, is when they get sudden, unexpected good news. So they get some good news and it's like, oh, that's wonderful, and, and it's too much, too much energy all at once, and it damages the heart. So I've talked about this a little bit, I think, in other vlogs. All emotions are healthy when they're in balance. All emotions can be unhealthy when they get out of balance, when they're too extreme. The same goes even for something like joy. So if we're stuck, oh, this is an interesting one, because emotions also become unhealthy when we become stuck in them. So what happens if we become stuck? So we have joy, we have this opening through our chest, wonderful joy. What happens when we become stuck there? We call that something different, we call it pride, right? And that's not healthy for us either, becoming stuck there. So if we have too extreme joy, too extreme pride, right? How is the exercise going to bring that back into balance? Well, bring us back into balance. What if we are feeling discouraged, disheartened? Well, the exercise, exercise is going to open us back up so that the energy can flow to the heart. Okay, interesting, I hope it's interesting, the way it connects together. I've gone a little bit beyond just feeling the meridian, but this is one of the big things that understanding and being aware of the meridians, it helps us to make the connection between our mind and our body, understand why we're responding in different ways to different things in our mind and body. And look, this I think really is one of the awesome amazing things about Qigong. Um, as well as being good for your health and your well-being, um, you know, which is often going to be the motivation for a lot of people to begin with, as you continue it really helps you to understand yourself, other people, your connection with the world around you. And it comes little by little as you, as you start to be aware of how energy works in you, how your mind and your body connects. So, Hopefully that was useful, hopefully it um, did what the title of the video suggested which was help you to understand how we know that meridians are real. Um, of course there's some other things that we can do in relationship to that as well, but exploring the meridians and the connection between your mind and body through Qigong practice is one of the really great ways that you can come to really not just know that the meridians are real, but start to understand them in a practical way that's beneficial in your life. So if you haven't already, I would highly recommend you do the Qigong Foundation Practices course on longwhitecloudqigong.com. Um, we do have a group going through doing the instructor certification. Even if you don't want to be an instructor, you can do that group. You can join that group. It gives you the, uh, the benefit of weekly Q&A uh, to clarify things and you know, to sort of guide you along the path. Um, we do have a group starting on 29th of July. And the course runs for 12 weeks. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of benefit you can get from that. It's also the last time that this course is going to be run in this format. Um, it's been up there on the website for about seven years now and uh, it's time to update it. Um, in fact, all, all of the courses I'm in the process of going through and it's going to take some time though, but I'm, I'm going through and we'll be re-recording them, rebuilding them with better material, more comprehensive material. So that's going to be something to look forward to in the future but there is going to be a wait. If you would like to do it sooner rather than later, July 29th is the time to join in and um, go through with a group and, and really benefit from these practices. Okay, a little bit of a different vlog today. Um, I guess hopefully they're always going to be different in a way, keep you interested with new different things. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I was scratching my head a little bit about what to, what to do for, my, for the vlog today. Um, which is unusual, normally something sort of just pops into mind, but um, 
but yeah this is what I ended up doing if you if you have any requests for something specific you'd like in the vlog please do leave them in the comments below that would be helpful and maybe I'll make a vlog about that soon um, also if you like comment subscribe share that would be awesome too I am hoping to reach lots of people with this channel okay I look forward to seeing you on the next one